friend point of view. And what's most noteworthy about this, if I may, uh, is if you look at the line that says, uh, whoops. Oh, gosh. I have very fat fingers. Uh, if you look at this line here, this is the total income that's coming into the parish. So in fiscal 16, round numbers, we had 562,000. In 2017, we had 556,000. And then last year, ending June 30th, 18, we had 537,000. The point of that line is that our revenues here in the parish have been dropping off over the last three years. The next most important line is the expenses. So on this line here, in fiscal 16, we had 581,000. In 17, we had 568,000. And then in fiscal year 18, we have 635,000. The significance of that line is that our expenses are climbing. So we have a reduction in income, we have an increase in expenses, and of course you would therefore expect that the consequences of those two is that we're losing money. And in fiscal 16, we lost round numbers 20 grand, we lost 12,017, and we lost Excuse me. We lost $98,000 in the current year ending uh, June 30th, 18. Now, we have a balance sheet, and I just want to focus on it very quickly. Uh, please note that what makes us a robust parish, parish from a financial point of view is that in 18, we have a savings account essentially of $1,860,000. And I'll come back to that later in the slide. Uh, there are multiple sources of income for our parish. We have stole fees. These are fees we charge in connection with weddings and funerals. Uh, that number, of course, is not predictable. Who knows who's going to get married? Of course, who knows when, but for God, who's going to pass away. In, in 18, that was roughly 21,000. Uh, you see in our bulletin, we have various ads, and that's an income source for us, $11,000 in uh, the last couple of years. We also have interest income. Interest income is what's paid to us with respect to the savings account that we have with the diocese. I might note that the interest that is guaranteed to us is 1.35% per annum. Um, so if you add up the non-donations, in fiscal 16 we had 72,000, last year it trailed off just a bit at 71,000, and in fiscal 18 it crept up a bit to 76,000. However, the key number to focus on is donations. You'll see that uh, over the three year period we're looking at, Donations have fallen from uh, 489 down to 462. So, uh, measured on a percentage basis, the non donation sources of income were up 4.5%, but charitable donations have fallen 5.6%, again, over the same three year period. So as mentioned in the overview, over the last three years, our losses as a result of both rising expenses and reduction in contributions has been 19,000, 12,000, and 98,000 over the last three years. Uh, our fiscal year begins July 1, 2018. We refer to that as fiscal 19. And you'll see for the first three months of the year, 
we have lost thirty-five, thirty-six thousand dollars. If I was to annualize that, it would suggest that we will be losing $142,000 for the full year. Let me say, however, three months of data does not make for a definitive or even accurate forecast of what our losses may be. If I had to make a projection of where I think we're going to end the year, it's probably going to be north of $100,000, give or take. $15,000. So you're going to say, well, if we're losing money and we have rising expenses, what are the key expenses of the parish? And that's what this slide tells you. Uh, so what I've done here is I've captured what they were in fiscal 16 as well as what they were in fiscal 18, again, ending June 30th. And they're ranked based on size. So the very first expense is what we pay to the diocese to finance their programs, schools, and other uh, programs that the diocese has. In 18, that's 108,000. Lay salaries of the people who work for the church is 90,000. Music ministry is 75,000. Clergy compensation uh, is 42. Uh, utilities, 39, etc. So uh, the subtotal of those expenses are 513,000 in 18 versus 498,000, an increase of 2.9% overall an increase of 9.3% on a total expense basis. What's really important to understand about expenses is that some of these expenses are not within our control. I'll call those expenses uncontrollable versus those expenses which are within our control. So for example, diocesan assessments uh, we have no ability to alter what we're assessed or levy. Same thing with clergy compensation. Utilities, of course, are, are not within our control. Health care, which is mandated by law. Uh, buildings and repairs, which we've had to address, which I'm going to come back to in a bit. The uncontrollables, lodges, is lay salaries, of course, followed by music ministry, supplies for a religious ed program, uh, and so forth. So, when we look at the totals in FY18, right here, roughly $270,000 is uncontrollable, and roughly $269,000 is uncontrollable, i.e., 50% is uncontrollable, and 50% we can control to a limited extent. Uh, you might say, what does the diocesan assessments consist of if it's the parish's largest expense last year at 108000 So here's the breakdown. There are, I don't know, 10 different categories that all parishes fund based on a set of percentages that the diocese assesses each parish. And so the total in 90, at 16 was 90, uh, 98,000. The total in uh, 18 is $108,000. So um, it's been growing at roughly uh, five or six percent per annum. And again, this is a each year assessment fee. It's not a one-time event. Uh, the good news about our parish is the following. If our income statement is showing operating losses, a function of rising expenses, as well as some trickle down with respect to donations, we have a very strong overall financial condition because what we have in our savings is money to the extent of 1.86 million in 18 although down from 1943 and 16. Let me talk about our savings account. 
First of all, the nomenclature of the diocese is called the central fund. And what we as a parish have benefited from, there was a parishioner by the name of Margaret McCann who 21 years ago donated her residence to the parish. And at that time, 21 years ago, it was valued about $2 million. So the fact that we have such a strong balance sheet today is only because of the generous donation of a, of a parishioner made many years ago. And I guess where I sit in the audience, I would ask the question, well, gee, if, if the value of that donation 21 years ago was $2 million dollars in change, why is the value today only 1860? And the answer is twofold. One, you can only pay with your losses from cash. So we've had to dip into our savings account to finance our losses, pay expenses, etc. And number two is we do not get a market uh, gain on our investments. So let me explain that again. If you have money and you invest it in the marketplace, whether it's equities or fixed income, etc., then you will, you're at risk to the vagaries of the marketplace, which means you may make money, and of course you may also lose money. The diocese, however, doesn't want parishes to be in the marketplace from the standpoint of being exposed to potential losses. So as a result, we do not get market gains on our investments, all right, which means we get neither the gain nor the loss. So if we dip into our savings account, then it means that we have a permanent reduction in the carrying value. The other thing I should know is that the diocese guarantees us interest income, and that guarantee currently is 1.35%. It went up a bit in fiscal 18, it had been 1.25 in 2016-2017. Now, if you're asking me if we as parishes of dioceses are precluded from market fluctuations, does the diocese invest in the marketplace? That is, does the diocese have a risk position vis-a-vis market fluctuations, be it gains or losses? The answer is yes. The diocese does invest the pool of monies that belong to the parishes. It has a professional investment advisor vis-a-vis -vis Morgan Stanley. So it does benefit from potential gains in the marketplace, but also means that if there are downturns in the market, then the diocese is exposed accordingly. We parishes don't have that exposure. Now, everybody knows here you can only pay your bills with cash. And in our case, what I've tried to capture here, what do we look like from a cash point of view? So if I go back to 17, our cash in was $556,000. Our cash out was $567,000. So we had a deficit, a cash deficit of 11,005. In 18, our cash out was 537,000. I mean, our cash in was 537. Our cash out was 635. We had a deficit of 98,000. All right. Based on where we are in fiscal 19, which started July 1, 18, we're running about a $33,000 deficit. Now, the the combination of those three periods is that we have an overall cumulative cash deficit of $142,000. What does that mean? If you looked at our cash, our cash flow is very lumpy. As you would expect, we have a peak in our cash givings at Christmas time. 
So when you look at the info cash, Christmas and to a lesser extent Easter are our prime cash collection uh, periods. However, for the other 10 months of the year, we actually do not cover our expenses, and so we have to dip into our central fund, our savings account, in order to be able to pay bills. Every time we dip into our savings account, again, all right, we have a permanent reduction in that account. It's not any different than if you have a savings account and you dip into your savings account, all right, all right, unless you will somehow can replenish that money, the value in that account is going to decrease. So let me stop here for just a second. Uh, going back to expenses, I think there's some things going on that I think you should know. Beyond the basic notion that 50% of our expenses are not controllable, we've also had some unusual expenses that were not anticipated. Uh, in 98, 88, excuse me, 18, excuse me, in fiscal 18, uh, a big part of the $98,000 we lost was the result of having to spend approximately $36,000 in billing repairs. What happened is when Father Gary arrived and began to take sort of stock of the physical plant and our needs, one of the early on things that he realized was that our chimney, our bell tower, the mortar, which knits the limestones together, had deteriorated to the point that we had water penetration, and that water penetration was coming into the church. Luckily, that damage was minimal initially, but it did require having to bring in masons to retuck and repoint the entirety of the chimney slash bell tower. No choice. Uh, additionally, some other expenses that Father Gary addressed was that the rectory, which has been in, our, in the control of uh, uh, the diocese since I think 79, had never been remodeled or updated, and its condition was, I'll call it somewhat embarrassing, particularly with respect to the bathrooms. As you know, we have a lot of visiting priests here, and I think you know it's appropriate to have at least reasonably good facilities for them to stay over, and Father Gary addressed that as well. All right? Now, some of the other side of the coin on expenses, and I will tell you that the Finance Council is looking very hard on all of our expenses with respect to how we can trim the sales vis-a-vis -vis those expenses which are within our control. Let me give you some examples. Again, when Father Gary got here, one of the things he saw was we were paying for waste disposal, uh, waste management, $400 a month. Father Gary saw there was a better way to manage that cost and brought in another vendor, and we pay $89 a month today. Okay? A savings of more than $300. Number two, we used to have curbside pickup at the rectory when in fact we got a dumpster right around the corner and so Father Gary terminated that service, saving us about another hundred dollars a month. Three, we had a phone system that was a patch quilt of band-aids, string, and gum. <laughs> Those are technical terms, all right? And uh, Father Gary replaced that um, that string and, and Campbell soup can with a real with a real phone system. And the net of all that is that our phone expenses dropped a third, a third of what it was. Okay? Now, we have something here called contract services. Contract services include ground maintenance, plowing, shoveling, and various uh, various other services with respect to the grounds and other services generally. Those services in, 40, in, in 18, fiscal 18, totaled uh, $42,000. Now, uh, one of the key things to when you have contracted services is to test the marketplace, and that is to put out those services to a competitive bid. Two reasons. 
Uh, as you well know, contractors tend to get a little sloppy when they've been in an account for a long, long time. The quality of service sort of dips down and they get sort of custom uh, and, and uh, feel they can sort of always increase the price. Well, the way to manage that issue is to put it up to bid and see if we can find a more competitive cost and, and right, even an increase in the quality of services. So your finance council will be doing that uh, over the next year or so to try again to better manage expenses. So even though the part of expenses that are within our control is only 50%, the answer is we will bring back a more frugal operation to the church. Having said that, however, even though we will make that effort, the key to our being able to manage our, our expenses better and to help our church become profitable again are going to be in initiatives I'm going to go forward, I'll go through right now. Number one, if all of our parishioners increase their weekly donation by two dollars, two dollars, all right, it would wipe out our deficit. In round numbers, we have about 1,200 registered families, and so to the extent each of them on a weekly basis increased our donations, two dollars, our deficit is gone. Number two, online giving. Now, uh, we have on our website the ability for parishioners to give, and there's a slide I'm going to show you about the details of that, but uh, we're a parish that has a fair number of parishioners who head south for the cold weather. And as Joanne will tell you, Mike, why can't we be one of them? Well, the answer is because I'm a, if you look at my girth, I like cold weather. I, I don't do well at And so we thought it would be beneficial to help people set up the ability to make contributions online for when they're not here, be it snowbirds or unable to attend Mass on a regular basis. And in one of the handouts, which are down by the little passageway from the kitchen, you'll also see a copy of the online giving web sheet uh, page. Estate giving. I mentioned that Margaret McCann gave us 21 years ago uh, her home at a value of roughly two million dollars. Uh, I would certainly uh, ask humbly of any of you that as part of your estate planning would consider making some kind of donation to St. Teresa, which would help us assure the continued viability of our parish for many years to come. And so it's a nice way to provide for uh, both charitable giving and as well as helping our parish if, again, you would, uh, would consider that. Corporate matching. Good many of employers today and have been for years, will provide a matching policy whereby for each dollar that you give to a travel organization is they will match it either fully, meaning dollar for dollar, or at some percentage of what you give. If you have an employer which has a corporate matching program, I would encourage you to leverage your donation by getting your employer to match that donation fully or partially. Capital campaign. Um, the cornerstone for this church was laid in 1947. We were a summer parish up until 1979 when Father Moran came here and became our first full-time a pastor in the diocese went diocese, excuse me, the parish went from a uh, summer mission to a full-time parish. So uh, the facilities, the church, and later in time the parish center, which was built quite a few years later, 
all right? It is like any other physical plant. It ages, it needs to be maintained, all right? And there are other issues we're going to have to face in the near term. Let me give you an example. We have eight air conditioning units here at the parish. Two of them have failed. The cost to replace those two units, because they're so old, repairing them makes no sense. The cost of this, those two units is $8,000. Now, if we had other larger expenses, and I'll give you an example, if our slate roof was compromised, all right, and we had to do substantial repairs, we're talking about a lot of money. So we think it's prudent for our parish to have a capital campaign in which we would raise money and create a reserve that we would have available to the extent that we had to make repairs on the physical plant. Again, that's the parish, uh, I mean the parish center here, the church, or the rectory. The question becomes, how much are we going to raise? What do we need? We don't know. We are going to bring in a professional company to evaluate the physical plant, estimate its remaining useful life, and also estimate what would be the replacement cost if we had to effectuate those repairs. With that information, then sometime over the next, uh, let's say 12 months, maybe a bit sooner than that, then we will be coming to you with our thoughts and our recommendations, and we'll be seeking your assistance to help create, I'll call it a rainy day fund, to address potential problems we may have with the physical plant of our church. I don't think I'm uh, being boastful in saying to all of you that we probably have the best music ministry in the entire Seacoast area. I think Mary Lou does an incredible job, a lot of talent, uh, in our choir, and I know there are lots of people that come here because of our music ministry. However, talent comes at a cost, and our music ministry last year cost us about $75,000. It also is an income center. As I mentioned, we charge fees for weddings and funerals, and last year, fiscal 18, that was 21000 so the net expense to the church is about 54. However, we do have some current challenges, both in retaining talent and also with respect to uh, other necessary costs. I might note that our organist uh, unfortunately suffered uh, ill health uh, not so long ago, and we do not have, at the moment, a full-time organist we have somebody pitching in in the short run, and so the expense of, or of the organist is a significant expense of the ministry. Uh, we do already have one donor who has agreed to pick up the cost of outside professional musicians. Mary Lou supplements our uh, key services, particularly Christmas and Easter, by having other professionals augment our choir and our musical instruments and I will say that there's been one person stepping up and has agreed to pick up that cost, a big help. That said, and given the fact that our music ministry is so important, we think it makes sense to have periodic collections solely dedicated to the proposition of helping support our music ministry, and we're thinking that that would be a monthly special collection. Uh, this is the slide with you'll see for online giving. Uh, again, it's in the packet by the passageway for the kitchen. I would encourage you that if you are not uh, able to attend Mass here on a regular basis, be it uh, because of the winter time or what have you, to please consider that uh, making uh, online giving as a, a routine that you'll implement for the benefit of our church. Now. And I've been here 20 years, uh, having moved here from Chicago. And um, 
Uh, I regularly attend St. Teresa, and I will tell you that in my uh, judgment, and having been fairly active in the church, I think that you as parishioners have always risen to the occasion and helped our parish through thick and thin. So I'd like to think, and I believe and have the confidence that, you as parishioners will again rise to the occasion and help St. Teresa get through what I call a bit of a rough patch. And that is to work together to see if we can bolster our donations to return us back to a profitable operation. As I mentioned in, the, in what we can do to help our church, $2 more a week for each registered family would wipe out our deficit. So with that, that concludes my comments. As mentioned at the top, we can have and entertain any questions or comments you may have. Myself or any members of the Finance Council would uh, be happy to respond. So let me, let me stop and ask, are there any questions about any of the material discussed? Mr. Bob. On <clears throat> slide five, um, the music ministry, you've got a footnote three, and it, it says, uh, where did it go? Okay. Net of school fee music ministry expenses were 37 and 53. Could you explain that? I don't understand it. Okay. Uh, the diocese allows us to charge fees in connection with in connection with um, this slide five, no, okay. back one. Okay, the diocese allows us to charge fees in connection with weddings and funerals. And those fees we charge is therefore a source of income. Since those fees are primarily to cover our expenses of the choir for those events, then it's appropriate for us to look at the music ministry gross, call it $75,000, net of the fees that are paid for our choir and uh, musicians, $21,000 as a net expense last year, last year ending June 13 of $54,000, rounded. Does that answer your question? Yes. Yeah. Talking about the contract services, yeah. your slide shows correctly percentage change from 16 to 2018. Yeah. Everybody's handout is incorrect. Oh, is it? Yeah, it's still incorrect. It, it should have been changed. It is not a reduction of 14.3%, which your handout is showing. It's actually 8.9% increase. So you picked up on that. That's Incorrect in the uh, Just in case you're wondering, I majored in horticulture. Okay. Uh, it took Mark to pick up the, the, the typo. I'm sorry about that. I thought we corrected that. Other questions, please? The Tom. corrected version will be on the web. Thank you, Thomas. Special collections for other functions outside the parish, such as missions, mission Sundays, uh, various mission weekends we might have, Catholic charities. Those contributions, are they included in any of these monies? Not, not Catholic charities. Okay. Some, some, some collections flow through us, but if we are not the principal beneficiary of the amount collected, then it would be inappropriate to reflect that on our books of records, number one. Number two, if it was reflected on our books of records, then the assessment issue would kick in. So it's kind of a double whammy. Other questions, please. Yes, sir. Why don't you consider a monthly offer in some form? We either send out one envelope of a like, telephone bill. A lot of parishes are doing that in the Midwest. I well, think that would, would tie things down a lot better. So you're advocating, Bill, that we do one collection a month? Yes. 
don't know if anybody has thoughts on that. So I'll take that one. The one option and the reason why we went to online giving is it gives each individual the opportunity <coughs> to give how they, you know, if there's certain times a year, for instance, as a person that, that might be easier for you, it would offer you that benefit. So if you wanted to do it monthly, it would offer you to do that. The online option is truly a better way of being able to donate on a regular I, I'd be truthful in saying that I'm agnostic. Is that Charlie, I think? I can't even see. Yeah, Charlie. I have cataracts, so I am completely blind. Uh, that's why I can't see the slides. Yes, sir. Um, I was wondering about the, uh, the, the bringing the donations up by $2 is a, is, a, is a valid way of doing this. But are the fees that we're offering or charging for the, the services that we put out there, the, the weddings, the funerals, the, all the other fees that we do, are they standardized? No, they're not. Good point. Uh, there are guidelines provided by the diocese, uh, and those guidelines, I would say, are, uh, from a cost point of view, uh, quite thin. I, I have a very simple philosophy. We should at least cover our costs, but beyond covering our actual out-of-pocket costs, we should actually look at this as an opportunity to create some incremental fees for the benefit of our parish. So I, I assure you, if you were getting married in the cathedral, the cost that we charge would pale in comparison to what it would cost at the cathedral. I think. Go ahead. I know it's one of the expenses that is not within the church's control, but the assessments. Right. What's the basis for the diocese to apply that assessment to the cathedral? Okay. First of all, the assessments are formulaic which means that there is a percentage charge that the diocese determines for all of our different uh, collections. And so it's not the same, in addition to not being the same, depending on the actual item being assessed or levied. For example, one of the biggest costs that we pay for is Catholic schools. So what I understand, and I have not had the chance yet to authenticate this with the diocese, but I'm led to believe that what we pay percentage-wise is the same for each parish, all right? Now, I am aware that there are some parishes which are not doing well financially, and there may be some relief they're given. I don't know that as a matter of fact, but I do understand that the, the assessments with respect to the percentage charge is a consistent level. Obviously, depending on what your revenues are, then the amount you pay as an assessment will vary. All right? In round numbers, the assessments are just a touch under 20% of what we collect gross. Father, do you want to comment? Okay. Any other questions? Uh, Mike, you mentioned a figure like 1,200 registered kind of person. My understanding. Is that family numbers? Families. So, if we looked at 1,200 and I looked at last week's contribution, there were 194 envelopes used. Right. Is that difference of, um, either in the CAC or even, or folks just not giving? Well, envelope users are not everybody in the parish. Not everybody uses an envelope. Right. That's my question. Yes. Okay. So. Yeah, I mean, you know, if you notice in the, if you see the, the basket when it's passed, yeah. there's still a good number of people who give cash. Right. versus envelopes. Exactly. So envelopes are not necessarily a good indicator, all right? The other thing, too, there are people who make special uh, charitable donations, sort of one-off gifts, all right? That's not an envelope, per se. Okay. All right? There are a number of parishes in, in, in our parish who have been generally supporting our parish for a good number of years, and that's outside of the, quote, envelope contributions. Other questions, please? My, the two two dollar increase I think is great, but how realistic do you think it's going to be? Yeah. I, I I think anybody who's been sort of monitoring how we're doing from a collection point of view in our bulletin, and for those of you who attend mass regularly, I think that it would not be an erroneous conclusion. 
to say that our attendance has fallen. And as our attendance falls, then the level of charitable donations and contributions tends to mirror that in trail off as well, okay? Now, some of the drop off in attendance is seasonal, i.e., again, snowbirds. Some of it, I think, may be um, we're somewhat of an aging parish. Uh, younger people are not as active today in the church, although there are a number of things the diocese is doing, such as lowering the age of confirmation, that hopefully will bring some of the younger folks to the church. So, you know, we have our challenges going forward, but as I noted in my concluding comment to the presentation, my sense of, the, of this parish, that this is a parish that the people are already generous, and I think have the capacity to be even more generous. And when they now know that we have some financial challenges and that we're now operating at a loss, I like to think, to quote Newt Rockney, the legendary Notre Dame coach, when the going gets tough, the tough get going. And so I like to think that we will rise to the occasion and help us through what I call this rough patch. Do you have a time span in which you're going to measure how you're doing? In other words, in three months or four months rather than the entire year? Well, that's actually a good point. The question I think arises is if after this presentation we don't see a change in the level of donations vis-a-vis -vis the concept of a few more dollars to help us address our operating problems, there probably might be a need, and it may not be a formal presentation, but there may be a need to put some comment in the church bulletin that goes like this. How are we doing? Okay? And, and you know what, I, if you gathered from just observing me and my comments, um, I've never been known to sugarcoat things, okay? Sort of, you know, just give me the facts. So. We'll, we'll give you the facts if, in fact, it's warranted about how we're doing, good or bad. Mike. Yes, sir. I just, I would say that I think that for every person that donates $2, there's going to be perhaps people that don't change their donations for financial reasons or whatever. And it just demonstrates the need to have other people who are going to increase their donations by more than $2, so that we have an average increase that will help cover the expense. But clearly, some people are more able to or more interested in increasing their tithing to help the, help the parish. Thank you, Tom. Mark, yes, ma'am. Would you consider, as a finance committee, perhaps doing a drive or something that might have something encouraging people to use? Envelopes as a sign up day after church or before church, or because it would seem that somebody would be less likely to put a dollar or two in an envelope that could perhaps give more than to put a little bit more in an envelope that they might do. My, my experience is that anything that helps this parish raise more money is a great idea. <laughs> okay, so yes. But there's never been a big drive. I mean, you register to come to the parish and you do an envelope and that about the extent of the push to use them. I, I, if I may, all right, I think it would be safe to say that in the area of donations, this parish has been pretty passive. Okay? And, and I think that the days of our being passive uh, really needs to come to an end. And I like to think that this presentation perhaps will be illuminating on the issue of how we're doing and the fact is, we've got some challenges. I mean, thank God, Margaret McCann gave us a $2 million plus donation 21 years ago. But as you saw on the screen, we're now down to $1,086,000. Obviously, still a lot of money. But look at this. If we continue to have shortfalls on the operating side and an inability to cover expenses on the cash flow side, we'll be dipping into that savings account on a regular basis. I like to think that as parishioners that we have the duty to assure that St. Teresa will be this church in Rye Beach for the long pull. And if we're going to do this for long pull, I think 
the time to address some of the challenges we're having is today and now, and not some point down the line. Michael. Michael, uh, can it be determined or has been determined what the average uh, donation per parishioner is uh, weekly? Uh, as far I don't have that information, and I don't know whether we actually keep those kind of statistics. Oh, okay. Okay. I mean, presumably it's measurable, but one of the distortion factors of that is, again, not everybody gives by envelope. And therefore, the only ones we can identify are envelope givers. So people who donate cash, people who make special contributions, particularly anonymously, okay, we don't know who they are. And you'd be surprised, there's a good number of people who really don't want their names uh, disclosed. I mentioned that in our music ministry, we have one person who already stepped up to the plate to cover the cost of the outside professional musicians, all right? That person does not want their name disclosed. So for those reasons, we don't have a statistical average. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Yes, when you get your envelopes, all right, you can tell the name of the person donating it, you know, after scratching it out. So well, we're trying to keep it short. 